You're listening to Audiology. Support our work on Patreon and be sure to submit your requests for topics in the comments below. Christian nationalism is a belief system that combines aspects of Christianity with national identity. It primarily deals with the way a society is governed, pushing for laws and policies that mirror their interpretation of Christian values and the influence of religion in politics and everyday life. Christian nationalism is focused on making a specific type of Christianity the main guide for moral and cultural norms. It is similar to theonomy but differs in its more populist approach. In places where there is an official church of the state, Christian nationalists strive to keep the church's prominent role in politics and society. They do this by opposing any changes that would separate the church from the state in order to maintain its influence in national affairs. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there was an increase in activities led by Christian nationalist groups. These groups, including Liberty Coalition Canada, seized on opposition to lockdown measures to broaden their appeal. Liberty Coalition Canada in particular has won backing from various elected officials across Canada. In their founding documents, they make a bold claim stating, it is only in Christianized nations that religious freedom has ever flourished. Their events have drawn support from notable figures like Alex Jones and the organization Canada First, which is connected to Nick Fuentes' America First group. Many of the leaders within Liberty Coalition Canada are pastors who have faced potentially millions of dollars in fines for not following COVID-19 safety protocols. These leaders often hold and express very conservative viewpoints. The far-right and pro-Russian political group called Power Belongs to the People, or VKK, has been identified as a Christian nationalist organization by the Finnish newspaper Helsing and Sanomat. Two prominent figures associated with VKK's activities Johan Bachmann, a parliamentary candidate, and Janis Putkinen, the editor-in-chief of the pro-VKK publication MV Media, have played a role in recruiting individuals to fight for Russia in the conflict in Ukraine. These recruits have reportedly been sent to training camps run by the Russian imperial movement in St. Petersburg before joining the fighting in the Russo-Ukraine war. Furthermore, an organization known as Sanan Ya Uskonon Vapaus Rai, which translates to the Freedom of Speech and Religion Association and is connected with Member of Parliament. Paivi Rasanen of the Christian Democrats has shown open support for candidates from the Blue and Black movement. This movement, described as openly fascist, seeks to outlaw the LGBT community and non-native religions. This association has also expressed support for VKK. The Blue and Black Movement draws inspiration from the Christian fascist views of the historical Patriotic People's Movement. Many historians view the period when Miklos Horthy led Hungary as being heavily influenced by Christian nationalist ideas. Historian Istvan Dijk offered a vivid description of this era, saying, From 1919 to 1944, Hungary leaned strongly to the right. Born from a movement opposing revolution, its leadership pursued policies steeped in nationalist Christian values including a deep reverence for heroism, faith, and unity. They rejected the ideals of the French Revolution and turned their backs on the liberal and socialist beliefs that emerged in the 19th century. To them, Hungary was a fortress against the spread of Bolshevism and its associated threats, socialism, internationalism, and Freemasonry. This period was characterized by the dominance of a small group of aristocrats, civil servants, and military officers who lavished praise on Admiral Horthy, the nation's ruler and a symbol of the counter-revolutionary cause. In more recent times, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has been a vocal supporter of Christian nationalism, promoting it not only within Hungary but also as part of a broader global movement that connects European and American advocates of the ideology. Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, is often seen as a leading figure in Christian nationalist circles and among those who champion the causes of the Christian right globally. During his presidency, Putin has significantly boosted the influence of the Russian Orthodox Church. He openly expresses his strong commitment to Eastern Orthodoxy and maintains a close relationship with the patriarchs of Moscow and all Rus, namely Alexei II and Kirill. The Russian imperial movement, known as a neo-Nazi Christian nationalist organization, is notorious for training militants across Europe. It has enlisted thousands of individuals to join its paramilitary force, the Imperial Legion, which is actively involved in the conflict in Ukraine. Additionally, this group collaborates with the Atomwaffen Division, 
aiming to extend its network and recruit extremists from the United States. Christian nationalism is a movement aiming to make a specific exclusive form of Christianity, the main moral and cultural framework. It promotes merging this Christian identity with cultural conservatism and sees American citizenship as deeply intertwined with these values. Its followers often find common ground with Christian fundamentalists, white supremacists, and supporters of movements like the Seven Mountain Mandate and Dominionism. Christian nationalists advocate for strong, authoritative measures and a lean, hands-off government approach within a market-driven economy. Unlike theonomy, which pushes for biblical law to directly shape national legislation, Christian nationalism is more populist, treating America's foundational texts as if they were divinely guided and emphasizing a Christian preference in governance, including the election of leaders who, while not devout themselves, support conservative agendas. This movement champions Christian symbols and observances in public life, supporting state involvement in religious practices and displays such as celebrating Christmas as a national holiday, allowing school prayer, and displaying nativity scenes and the Christian cross during religious holidays. While it draws considerable support from the broader Christian right, the push for celebrating Christmas nationally sees a wider appeal. Christian nationalism has been linked to biased attitudes against minorities, essentially framing itself around a white conservative identity and nurturing fears of immigrants, racial, and sexual minorities. It has been associated with xenophobia, homophobia, misogyny and intolerance towards non-traditional family structures and beliefs that deviate from its white, Protestant, and heteronormative ideals, including support for restrictive gun laws and policies against civil liberties for those outside its cultural norms. In the American context, Christian nationalism posits that the United States is uniquely blessed and superior, ordained by divine will, and founded as a Christian nation. Believers often think of themselves as the only true Americans, and see events like the Ruby Ridge standoff and the Waco siege as pivotal moments fueling their cause and militia involvement. They aim to reclaim the United States for what they see as its original God-intended Christian purpose. Feeling their beliefs and values under threat, Christian nationalists express concern over diminishing religious freedom and dominance. Research suggests that reminders of their declining demographic can boost support for the movement, accompanied by heightened anger, depression, and anxiety among its members. They fear falling short of divine expectations and the subsequent divine wrath for failing to create the nation they believe God wants. During the COVID-19 pandemic, people who strongly identify with Christian nationalism demonstrated a high level of skepticism towards science, especially in areas they believe to be in conflict with the Bible. This group also frequently opposed measures such as lockdown, restrictions on social gatherings, and the wearing of masks. A study from 2020 discovered that, even when accounting for various social, religious, and political factors, support for Christian nationalism emerged as a key factor leading individuals to prioritize economic factors over the needs of vulnerable populations. This stems from a widespread belief that combines Christian identity with ideas of economic success and personal freedom. In the United States, support for Christian nationalism has been identified as a major reason why some Americans struggle to acknowledge facts correctly, especially regarding Christianity's role in the nation's founding documents, policies, and judicial decisions. Individuals who align closely with Christian nationalism were more likely to confidently give incorrect answers about such matters, while those who rejected Christian nationalism were more likely to correctly understand these aspects. According to a research article from 2021, this trend is similar to how some conservative Christians misunderstand science that conflicts with their religious views. It suggests that people who embrace Christian nationalism may often accept inaccurate beliefs about religion's role in American politics, influenced both by specific sources of misinformation and a desire to uphold a certain political and cultural narrative they favor. Recent studies have shown a connection between Christian nationalism and backing for political violence. This trend becomes more pronounced when mixed with a preference for conspiracy-driven news sources, a strong sense of white identity, feelings of being victimized, and support for the QAnon movement. Specifically, a survey conducted in 2021 with 1,100 U.S. adults revealed that individuals who embrace Christian nationalism alongside these elements 
are more likely to support acts of political violence. The Christian Liberty Party and the American Redoubt Movement are modern political groups rooted in Christian nationalism, emerging from the Constitution Party. They embrace ideas of Christian nationalism, with the American Redoubt also leaning towards separatism. Other organizations, like the New Columbia Movement and the New Apostolic Reformation, share these Christian nationalist views, with the latter focusing on achieving dominionism. Back in the 80s and 90s, the religious right in the United States, made up of religious traditionalists, fought for religious freedom, racial equality, democratic values, and the separation of church and state, while also aiming to preserve white Protestant dominance. However, following the September 11th attacks, a shift occurred. The focus turned towards Christian nationalism, seeking clear advantages from the state and excluding minorities. This shift resulted in growing Islamophobia, which expanded to include negative perceptions of Latinos, Asians, and other immigrants, painting them as threats to Christian democracy. This viewpoint led to wide support among white conservative Christians for Donald Trump's presidency, the QAnon movement, and the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Bradley Onishi characterizes Christian nationalism as a quest for a nation defined by strict traditional values, including a heterosexual, white, native-born population that prioritizes English and upholds patriarchal structures. This ideology also underpins support for right-wing politicians and policies related to immigration, gun control, and poverty, distinguishing itself from evangelicalism. Research indicates that high religious engagement among white evangelicals correlates with less support for nationalist policies, though not affecting their socially conservative views. A 2022 study highlighted that evangelical Republicans are the main supporters of Christian nationalism, with a significant majority favoring the official declaration of the U.S. as a Christian nation. Such views are particularly strong among older Republicans. Furthermore, feelings of white grievance correlate highly with support for Christian nationalism. Notable political figures like Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and Doug Mastriano identify with Christian nationalism. Andrew Torba, CEO of Gab, represents this ideology in the digital sphere, promoting Christian nationalism as a means to save America and endorsing controversial views on race. Nick Fuentes also supports Christian nationalism. Catherine Stewart describes Christian nationalism as a determined power grab, noting Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' advocacy for this ideology to bolster his political career. One of DeSantis' initiatives includes a civics course challenging the strict separation of church and state and promoting a fixed interpretation of the Constitution. Christian nationalists also engage in spiritual warfare, viewing it as a battle against demonic forces controlling various societal sectors opposing God's will. This includes defending against advancements in reproductive and LGBTQ plus rights and non-Christian religious tolerance. Following the January 6th attack on the Capitol, the idea of Christian nationalism has been closely tied to the politics of white Christian identity. This belief system is seen as being deeply embedded in what it means to be American. According to the New York Times, Christian nationalism in the U.S. has a history of including extreme ideologies. Critics highlight that it often encourages racism, male aggression, anti-democratic views, and a skewed view of history. It's also associated with a strong resistance to gun control laws and fervent support for expansive interpretations of the Second Amendment, emphasizing the right to own and carry weapons. Political analyst Jared Yates Sexton has commented on the political landscape, noting, Republicans recognize that QAnon and Christian nationalism are invaluable tools. He describes how these beliefs legitimize anti-democratic actions, political violence, and widespread oppression, posing an incredible threat that goes beyond the era of Trumpism. On the research front, a comprehensive report of 66 pages titled Christian Nationalism and the January 6, 2021 Insurrection was jointly published by the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty and the Freedom from Religion Foundation on February 9, 2022. This document explores how Christian symbols and language were prominently featured by protesters on January 6th. It also outlines the collaboration between various nonprofit organizations, lawmakers, and clergy to infuse theological support into the events of January 6th and Donald Trump's efforts to contest his electoral defeat, emphasizing the significant role of race in these dynamics. 
a virtual briefing called God is on our side, White Christian Nationalism and the Capitol Insurrection, was hosted by the Congressional Freethought Caucus on March 17, 2022, featuring discussions from notable experts including Amanda Tyler, Dr. Samuel L. Perry, Dr. G. Martisby, and Andrew Seidel. On the following day, Seidel offered written testimony to the Select Committee investigating the Capitol attack, emphasizing the danger Christian nationalism poses to America's democratic foundations. In an effort to raise awareness and spur action, the Washington Post reported that a documentary film produced by Rob Reiner, titled God and Country, was released in early 2024. Its goal is to alert American Christians who attend church to the dangers posed by anti-democratic religious extremism in the United States. Addressing discussions in the media about the impact of Trumpism and Christian nationalism after the 2020 presidential election, Professor Daniel Strand from the American Conservative highlighted the limited Christian elements at the January 6th protest. He challenged the idea that Christian nationalism was a key driver behind the Capitol attack. Strand referred to a study by the University of Chicago, which concluded that the individuals arrested on January 6th were mainly driven by the conviction that the election had been stolen and by beliefs in the so-called Great Replacement Theory. According to Strand, this study does not point to any clear religious motivations or theological convictions regarding America as a Christian nation. In the 2016 election, about one quarter of voters were white evangelical Christians, and a substantial portion of them were very impressed with Donald Trump by 2017. On the contrary, non-white evangelicals did not lean that way at all, and mainly supported Hillary Clinton. Despite having similar religious beliefs, 90% of black Protestants voted for Clinton. Philip Gorski from Yale highlights that the support of white evangelicals for Trump is closely connected to their embrace of white Christian nationalism. The Israeli philosopher Adi Ophir draws a parallel between evangelical support for Trump and an appeal to purity, comparing Trump's idea of building a wall to the biblical story of Nehemiah. He suggests Trump positions various groups like Mexican migrants, gays, and Catholics as enemies in this narrative. Michael Horton, a theologian, describes the phenomenon of Christian Trumpism as a combination of believing in American uniqueness, theories about the end times, and prosperity teaching, all tied together with a theme of self-promotion. Historian John Fee criticizes evangelicals seeking political influence, referring to those around Trump as court evangelicals. This includes high-profile figures like James Dobson and Franklin Graham, who support Trump despite his controversial actions. Those in the Christian community who have spoken out against Trump, including Timothy Dalrymple and Mark Galley from Christianity Today who called for his impeachment, have faced significant backlash. Historian Stephen Yeager, among others, echoes ancient warnings about religious figures getting too involved with politics and the dangers that accompany power. Robert Jeffress defends his support for Trump, even for hardline policies like family separation at the border, arguing from a biblical perspective that the government's job is to restrain evil. This rationale, according to him and others, is grounded in the teachings of St. Augustine and Martin Luther, though critics argue it's a justification that often leads to oppression. Despite facing uproar over Trump's comments regarding incidents like the Charlottesville rally, some evangelicals like Richard Land and Johnny Moore insist that supporting Trump is crucial for driving positive change. However, voices like Peter Weiner challenge this loyalty as deviating from core Christian values, warning of the risks in such support. Evangelical critics like Ben Witherington and Beth Moore criticize the idolization of Trump within their circles, emphasizing the importance of humility and service rather than pursuing political power. Figures like Peter Weiner and Russell D. Moore speak out against how Trump's presidency and his divisive language distort Christian teachings. Chris Hedges starkly compares Trump supporters to the German Christians of the 1930s, cautioning against a similar path of nationalistic worship. Theologian Greg Boyd underscores Jesus' rejection of political dominance, advocating for a Christianity focused on compassionate action rather than political enforcement. Both Horton and Faya recommend a faith response that embraces civil rights values, highlighting the significance of hope, humility, and an awareness of history. Moreover, there's the Jericho March, an event characterized as an idolatrous combination of Christianity and Trump politics, connected to a larger movement involved in the storming of the Capitol 
on January 6, 2021. This highlights the intense and often troubling blend of religion and political loyalty characterizing the Trump era among evangelicals. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more content.